Hey guys, it's Nick here. So I just got back from my um, event that I had in New York City today at 235th Lounge. It was a packed event. I went there, like I said earlier in the video, for the purpose of, you know, um, looking for people or looking for deals, number one, large apartment complexes, to looking for people that have deals that are trying to raise for them for their own you know thing and then number three was looking for people with money that want to invest and i just wanted to give you guys a summary of the event so the event was packed so the, which was great we had like i think low 60 high 70 people at the event um the lounge itself is you know beautiful so it's uh it's always nice to be there to see the the city from you know high up. As for the event, I'm gonna talk about the bad and the good. So, the bad that I experienced at the event was that I haven't been networking for a while, and I feel like I didn't get to network with enough people. I uh, you know it's it's hard to. It's hard to engage a conversation and as you talk with people that are there, you realize that, hey, okay, this conversation has nothing to do <laughs> with what your, uh, you know, objectives are, uh, are there for being at the event. And so you try to provide as much value as you can so you can go on to the next conversation. But as you provide value, the person you're talking to wants to talk to you more, so it's it's like you know how, how do you how do you play this game right? Um, so that there was that, and then there was um, I wasn't really on top of my game with having conversations, mainly because typically I'm waking up at like three p.m. and so I'm wide awake um, for the rest of the evening. Versus today, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. And then I was supposed to take my nap at around like 12. Then it dragged on to 1. And then next thing you know, I can only nap like 30 minutes. <laughs> when I say nap, it's like a three-hour thing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it, I'm kind of weird because of that. But, um, you know, normally I'm waking, I'm sleeping at 6 a.m. and waking up at 2 p.m. But today, the hours are off, so... I was on top. I wasn't on top of my game with connecting with people, talking to people. Um, so that's the, so that's the bad. That second bad point. The third bad point was um, I had this thing. Um, so this is probably one of my uh, hurdles to the game. My self hurdle. I hate. Um, or I, I I hate being getting on the phone, and. The reason why I hate getting on the phone is because there was a period of time in my life when I was on the phone all the time. And I thought that being on the phone was meant that, you know, there will be business that you would get out of it. So being on the phone, you and helping people and things like that, there will be you would get eventually business out of it. And I did that for a year and I didn't get much business out of it. But as soon as I stopped answering the phone or talking on the phone and all I did was, you know, interacted with people, you know, with through email or whoever way, but I cut down the phone from like ninety percent of my business or my life to like just five or ten percent, uh, I ended up becoming more productive and more successful. And so because I went through that experience um, ten years ago, eleven years ago, since then, I've made it a, like a self rule where I just don't. I try not to give out my phone number, and it's not to be disrespectful. It's just that even if I give you my number, I'm not gonna call or pick up your phone call. And so because of that, I try to avoid giving it out completely. And I would tell people, hey, you know, um, if I'm gonna give you my number, can we just text? Because I'm not gonna answer your phone call. And they think that oh, because I do that. I don't think they're worth it. It's not that. It's just I really, really don't, you know, I try not to answer anybody's phone call. Um, 
it's nothing against them. It's just it's just how I kind of like became the way I am, and um, so that made it difficult to network. <laughs> you would imagine that could, that would make it difficult to network, right? But um, some people don't mind. Some people think it's weird, but that's how I was networking. And then the uh, so that was number two. So that was uh, the issue number two. And then uh, issue, the bad number three was it's so weird, you know. I um, I was in Midtown. You wouldn't imagine like Midtown, New York is like a safe place, but I've I've been hearing that it's getting dangerous. This and that's going on, and you know I never thought much of it because I feel like you know it's New York. How can you know? There's always people out, cops out. Anyway, he came out of the event, like around uh, 10, 30, 11, walked to my car and my, and, you know, my car is, my car is parked on the street. I, I you know, I, I parked on the street for years, like, meaning I parked here for, like, at this same street for, I don't know, like, 10, 11 years throughout the years. And, um, never, nothing's ever happened to my car, but today I go to my car and guess what? Someone decides to break my side mirror of my car not the mirror not the not the mirror on the side of the car that's on the street but on the sidewalk side it doesn't make any sense right because to break that it's a you have to intentionally go there and break it but you know it's uh it's, it's you know it's upsetting um because i love my car but uh, don't be discouraged by it, you know. It's a, uh, it's just, it's just a car, and uh, you know you can just buy and replace it. But it's just weird, like, and, and so just I guess to me that the way I'm looking at it is, it is getting dangerous. It's getting um, weird in New York. So if you have a nice car, don't park on the street, even though it's you know been parking there for mix many years. Do you, um, Put it in the garage so it's safe. As for ladies that are going to these events, um, you know, make sure to go in groups. Go with some. Go with friends. Go with you know more than one person so that way it's safe. Because um, it's it's New York, but it's it's here and there. It's 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 off, you know. So I just want to make sure everybody's safe. I'll just give you guys that tip. Um, outside of that, let's now go into the good. Of the event so I came there with a mission I wanted to accomplish you know meeting uh, hitting those three goals meeting some uh, looking finding a deal meeting someone with a deal that um, you know they're trying to raise for and then meeting people with money so what's great was at the event I ran to an old friend and he recently invested in a small apartment complex. And so he sent me the deal sheet um, that he got on the deal. It broke down, you know, the opportunity. It broke down how much money they were raising, what the payout was, what the IRR was, what the uh, year over year annual projected rate of return was. Uh, what the play was and I thought that was awesome because um, this was something I was looking for you know I, I, I was looking for uh, you know you know one deals people were raising for now my friend gave me the deal he invested in uh, details of the deal he invested in but he also says that he likes this investor and that this investor has other deals to look at and so I'm going to be linking up with him later to um, get other deals that are on the table to look at. And through that, I will be able to get a better eye on, you know, why it's good, why it's bad, and what, in a way, investors are presenting, and how they're presenting it, so that way um, people invest. So that's, so that's a good point. Uh, alongside that, I met a gentleman that 
has a great job, has uh, two family, makes a good sum of money, and he he wants to raise money to buy, you know, commercial properties with triple net leases. And I would, we were going back and forth on like, uh, you know, what is a good deal? Why is this deal better than that deal? And it's interesting because he was looking at triple net leases. So he was talking about more, okay, office space, uh, restaurants, retail, type, retail, type retail space. And I was talking to him about how I think triple net leases are great, but I think the the retail space is contracting right now, and how I thought um, the office space is also contracting right now. And as much as triple net is great, you know, it's um, it's kind of like, hey, is, is that the right right direction to go? As for me, I'm looking more at right now more residential space um, for my properties versus going after things just because uh, I can get triple net leases for them. I've also realized that because I invest in Philadelphia, PA, and New Jersey, people always say like, oh yeah, you know, um, New Jersey real estate has high taxes. So things cash flow better in Philly. Uh, I disagree. Based on my experience, I disagree. Yes, the taxes in New Jersey are higher, but I've come to find that the rental income is also higher. And the sale price is you know proportional or relative to the taxes and the rental income. As with Philly, the rental income or the, the taxes are lower, but the rental income is also lower. And because of that, the, the sales price is relative to that. And I've come to learn that in the end, it's uh, the rate of return that you would get as long as it's in like the same type of um, class area. It's, it's the same. And so what I'm trying to say is like... Um, Back to this conversation with this other razor that I met at the event. At the event, yeah. Um, his name is, I think, Earl. I forgot, I forgot his name exactly, but I think it's Earl. You know, we were talking about, oh, he prefers triple net, and I prefer residential. And there's a lot of benefits to triple net. There's um, they pay, tenants pay for utilities, taxes, and improvements. But um, because of that, the people that are selling the property know that when they sell it, they um, you, you can buy this and get a tenant that's going to do all this. And because of that, to me, again, I don't have no experience in this. This is just an assumption. To me, because it's more hands-free, I'm going to assume that the sale price is going to be higher. Whereas with residential, because you know, as the owner of the building, you're gonna have to pay the water. You're gonna pay these. Uh, you're gonna have to pay the taxes, and then you know this and that. Because you're handling it, um, it's gonna. You know, it's, it's in essence gonna sell for less compared to the triple net lease property. Again, this is an assumption. I'm just saying um, this is something I. I'm just laying out, and I'm. As I go through this journey, I'm going to prove if the assumption is accurate and uh, if it's not, why. So I'm looking forward to that. So that, that was one of the talking points that we had uh, as we were talking at the event. The other good point at the, uh, that was at the event was um, I met a lot of people that have access to a lot of money. The biggest problem, though, so this is the good point. They have a lot of money. Um, they have money to play. They want to invest. So that's the good point. The bad point though was they didn't necessarily want to invest, you know, two, three, four states away. They wanted to invest in New York, if not Manhattan, Brooklyn, <laughs> if not Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, 
Jersey City, North Jersey, not Texas, um, South Carolina, not, you know, states and states away. But they have money and they want to invest. So if you guys are trying to raise money for more local activity, uh, I encourage you guys to go to the New York RIA uh, networking events. As for uh, a summary or a conclusion of the event itself, I think I will attend one more. This time I will make an effort to network with, you know, not just like, I would say, I, I, today I network with probably seven to eight people because it was really hard for me to transition. But at the next event, I, I'm going to try to network with at least 20, 30 people, or 20, 25 people, something like that. Something reasonable so that way there's real conversations going on. But so that's number one. Number two, I want to, depending on how that goes, I'm going to start doing multi-family networking events, meaning the networking events are going to be very niched. Before this, before one of these events, I'm planning to attend at least one, maybe two, multifamily networking events to see how it's like, to see uh, if my assumption of what I'm expecting uh, is happening there. Because if it's happening there, and when I do it, it's gonna happen, you know, where I do it. And what I'm, uh, what my assumption is is, I believe if I make a niche networking event people that's into that niche will show up versus keeping it a very broad you know real estate networking because real estate networking encompasses everything but multifamily networking is just gonna encompass people into multifamily investing so hopefully that assumption is accurate people um, anyone that's in this watching this video if you do multifamily networking events if you've um, attended them let me know if my assumption is accurate and if you host one let me know your next event so that way in the comments below let me know so that way I can attend them and check it out also if you like and enjoy this uh, conversation please subscribe for you know updates and please hit the like button so that way I get the uh, you know the word gets uh, gets shared and then Along with that, next steps outside of this, um, these events, I am planning on having a webinar podcast session with either a lawyer or a friend of mine, mentor, who invests in apartment complexes, and I'm going to be having a conversation with him in regards to, you know, how he started raising for single family or whatever type properties and then transitioning to raising for apartment complexes and then transitioning to raising for a fund okay because the way you raise for each is different uh, the amount of money at play is different and in a way also the sales is very different so that's uh, a podcast webinar session I plan on doing sometime next week and then um, along with that I want to reach out to some of my friends that are already in the multifamily space and invite them to present a deal maybe like a apartment multifamily deal night type thing you know where they're gonna present a deal and um, and then we can you know they can explain to us why it's good why it's bad why it makes sense to invest here and through that we can uh, for everybody that doesn't understand what a good deal looks like we can tune in I just gotta figure out how to put a panel together of experts that already knows what a good deal looks like <laughs> so that way they can be like the, the controller so I'm gonna have to put that together as well but um, yeah uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fully pull that all off by next week but if 
if I don't, I plan on getting it done at least, uh, if not next week, the week after for sure. Okay, but if you have experience, if you're tuning in and if you have experience evaluating multifamily apartment buildings and you want to be one of those uh, people on the commercial deal night shark tank type webinar I'm going to do uh, and help us at, be like a controller meaning telling us if it's a good deal bad deal or why you think it's good why you think it's bad uh, how can it become better things like that again comment below let me know raise your hand um, so that way I can reach out to you and get you uh, you know involved in helping us all learn and make this business happen other than that um, if you enjoy the session if you um, if you could please subscribe please share please like and I will continue to move forward in providing whatever I can uh, whatever I'm learning as I go along this journey through getting into the 200 300 unit apartment building game thank you guys good night